Hey, what's up? I'm Nathan. I'm back with you with a little different video than I typically put out. Uh, I have a few car wash projects that I've been working on here, and this is a row build changer that I've now refurbished, and it's actually sold. I gotta load it up and uh, go ship it off to the new buyer. But going through this machine and understanding how it works, I thought it was really cool, and I did not see any other videos out there about these types of machines. It's mainly just forums or chat rooms where uh, you can ask questions, uh, but visually, uh, you may not be able to understand what they're talking about unless you can see pictures and stuff like that. So I wanna go through the insides, uh, mechanical parts of this machine with you, uh, show you what I fixed on the machine to get it working because when I bought it, it was not uh, working at the time. And uh, it's also got some things that have been updated on this machine. And so I'll show you the different upgrades that you can do because Row uh, Build Changers is not actually in business anymore. They've been bought out by American Changer who no longer manufactures this specific model. I believe they might be able to get you a few parts for them, but those parts are becoming more scarce. You have to buy them uh, used off of eBay or somewhere else. And so all those things we're gonna get into and show you that. But before that, let's go in here and bend some money so you can see it in operation. The first bill we're gonna test is a $1 bill. And I want you to pay attention to how quickly it dispenses the coins. So it dropped those coins almost instantly out of the machine. It's got four just like we need. But you may have been able to hear the machine was continuing to run even after these coins dropped because what's happening in here is there's three cups up here inside the machine that I'll show you in a minute, and they are pre-filled with the amounts that this machine bends. And so when it accepts that bill, it just drops that cup, and then it refills the cup so it's ready for the next cycle. This next bill is gonna be a big step up. We're gonna do $20 bills, but take note that this machine originally was not supposed to take $20 bills, now that it has an updated validator, it will though, and that's a total of 80 quarters. So 80 quarters coming into here, what's unique about this is it only has $10 already stored, and then it has to run an extra cycle and drop those $10, and so it's gonna be a long cycle to get us 80 quarters, but watch. Okay, so it just dropped $10 in coins right there. You can see there's a whole bunch that flat actually kind of presents some from coming forward. But the machine is still running. And then back here, it's counting out more coins into the cup. As you can see, as soon as that gets to zero, it'll drop the rest of those coins. One. All right. So now we have $20 literally sitting in this cup and then there's a hopper up here just filled with that money, and it's still refilling uh, the cups right now, getting ready for the next cycle, but that wasn't too bad. In about 20 to 30 seconds, it had 80 quarters counted out, and you just gotta dig them out of this cup. So the next thing we're gonna do is start to take apart this machine with you and show you all the different mechanics of everything. That green light running back and forth on there, is a good sign it means it's in normal operation and then you can you can see left center and right it tells you uh which cup it's filling and you saw it a, a second ago that it's counting how many uh, coins is being dropped into that cup okay so control board right here this will come in and out you just have to push that tab right there so that you kind of have easier access to the buttons and everything that typically you won't have to mess with very much uh, the validator back here this is what's been updated it has this mars bill validator you see it just stacks the bills inside of there and then you open up this tab here on the side to pull out the money and uh so that's what's made it so that this machine can now accept up to 20 dollars bills uh by just running two cycles in a row and then up here is the hoppers. So you have a little bar that comes across that you can pull these hoppers out and look down inside them, but that's too tall for me. So what I need to do 
is pull this bar out of the way like this. And then what I like about these row changer hoppers is that it is a fully mechanical hopper. Uh, a lot of your other changers, like the one you probably saw earlier in the video sitting next to this one, are electronic. And so there's a wiring harness plugged into them. Uh, what's nice about these is you can just pull them straight out and go refill them or do any maintenance on them. And all they have is just a gear attached right here to turn the inside of that and dispense coins. And that this gear right here matches up with these gears here to turn it. So we got the hoppers out. Uh, now we can start taking apart this uh, assembly right here. Before I get too far ahead of myself, I'll show you a little bit more on these hoppers. Uh, so you can see the coins down in the bottom right there. And you turn it around right here and you can see down inside, there's a little chain that goes in a snake-like pattern. So I'm gonna manually turn that so you can see. It turns like that and it picks up the quarters one at a time and then it'll drop them out just like that. So it's picking up quarters off the bottom and pulling them up to the top by way of that chain. A maintenance item for these hoppers is there's these special brushes that you can get for them that are just the right length to get all the way down in the bottom. And so what this is meant to do is clean that chain and any gunk off of this because if you get dirt and stuff stuck in there, it may slip and miss picking up coins and then the machine will take a long time to, to reset. So that helps you in keeping everything clean and debris off that chain. Okay, now this whole assembly right here will actually come apart by just taking off two bolts right here. In fact, it has instructions written on here. It says remove these two screws. So that's just a 3 8 socket. Uh, to be able to take that off and let's get it off. Now that I have this tip forward, it, it's in a good position for me to show you what the issue was with it when I picked it up and what I had to fix. So you can see right where these quarters drop out of those hoppers into this coin dispenser assembly, there is a red little laser that shoots across to this sensor right here in front of it. And every time that that sensor gets interrupted, it's counting one quarter going into whichever cup it's got activated at that time. And so I've put new LED uh, lights on each side. The old ones were a lot uh, dimmer and these are much brighter and it immediately cleared that error code that I was getting from before. And it's been working great ever since. This assembly is still loose, as you can see, but it's pivoting on a stud on either side. So this one right here is longer. And this one right here is shorter. So that's how you're gonna get this out of here. There are instructions right there, but it's not super clear. So what you do is pull this forward and there's a harness right here on the back side right there. So I'm gonna pull it forward so you can see. It's about a nine or 10 pin harness and you've gotta pull it out and unplug it from right here on the side. That's the only wiring harness you have. And then what you do is you tilt it forward, lift it up, and then the left one is gonna come out first. You're gonna slide it to the right, like even I'm having problems with it. So let's see, right like that. And then you can rotate it out and get the right side out. And the whole thing is out like that. All right, and so there is that whole assembly right there. So the sensors are on the front right here. You can take these off. I'll even do it for you real quick. Pull off this black tab and it's got that sensor that connects with the red light in front of it right there. And there's a black cover over that and just a little not over that. I believe this is like a, I don't know, probably a quarter 
a one quarter socket, take that apart, and then everything's wired in. So when I replaced those two lights, I took off these two screws, pulled out these lights, disconnected these harnesses right here on the side. So this one and this one with the light blue and black wires and then reconnected them. The orange and blue right there go back to the front, these front sensors right here. So you can see orange and blue. So if you ever had to replace the sensor itself and not just the light, you would unscrew it there, pull it off, pull it, and then run your wires through to the front, plug them in there. So that's all labeled. Now these other three wiring harnesses, one, two, and three, it's labeled already. Someone put on there with a marker, one, two, and three. Those are for one, two, and three cups. So you have uh, these little actuators right here that are opening and closing doors. You may or may not be able to see closer inside there. They're opening and closing doors so that the coins, when they come in through the detectors back here, are either are dropping into whichever cup it decides it wants to put it in. So just by these little levers right there. Now here's probably the best view of those cups you're gonna get. And they, they these are like little doors right here. But you can see coins inside through those little peep holes. You can see that they're full of coins already. So when a $10 bill is put inside the machine, it validates it and it decides to drop this door open and drop all the coins that are stored inside there. So I'm not gonna do it now because it's gonna dump coins all down here, but it's just controlled by this little lever right there on the top and it'll drop all those coins. And then I believe that this one would hold $5 worth of coins and this one would hold $1 worth of coins or some sort of that matter. Finally, on this assembly, you've got two motors on the bottom side. Well, at least my setup has two motors. There are uh, different models of this machine that may only have one motor, but those motors turn the gears on the front to the hoppers. So basically, these are your hopper motors. But like I say, the thing that I do like about this design is that I don't have any wiring harnesses to the hoppers. A lot of your hoppers will have motors mounted on them. These are mounted off the hoppers and then they just turn some mechanical gears. So that's that whole assembly. And then I was telling you earlier, there's this funnel that goes down to that coin cup uh, where you collect that money. In fact, the $20 worth of the coins is still in that cup. I haven't dug them out yet. You may or may not be able to see them back in there. And then just to the left of that little funnel, is your temporary out of service light. That is on because I have the coin assembly disconnected and so it's coming up with some errors. In fact, let's read what error. Check right coin detector. Well, that's because it's not plugged in. So let's get this whole thing put back together and then we'll ship it off. Now, one thing I did not talk about was these machines are really expensive machines, brand new. Uh, what it took me to repair this machine was about $60 in parts and a little bit of research on figuring out what the issue was. So those LED lights were $30 a piece. I replaced them, I got them brand new and uh, it works just like it did before. So the updates that you can do to these machines are I believe a new validator acceptor. There's a few different brands. It's gonna run you in the range of seven to, 700 to about a thousand bucks, depending on the brand you get or where you buy it or whatever. And so you can do that. But American Changer, the company that bought out Row, also makes an entire update kit that basically removes all of the mechanics from this machine, the boards and everything, and turns it into an American Changer with new hoppers and everything. And that's about $2,600. So it really beats buying a brand new machine because you're gonna get it 
it's gonna be brand new if you do something like that. The only thing you're really saving is this cabinet right here. And um, so you're doing it for about half the price. But if you take into account how much these costs and uh, what a full update kit costs and everything, it really makes sense to repair a machine like this for 60 bucks. And I was able to resell it for a few thousand dollars. I shouldn't say a few thousand dollars. I was able to resell it on eBay for a good amount of money and be able to recoup what I put into it and also make money for my time and everything else, getting it back in working condition. I did take the time to really vacuum this out, clean it up. I polished the front with some ultimate compound to really get the old stuff to shine, but I didn't replace the decal or anything like that. Uh, these locks can sometimes uh, be replaced. Well, they can always be replaced um, depending on how many parts they need and stuff, but I was able to get a used uh, cylinder and put inside this T-lock right here. And so it locks up and everything. It's got a key and stuff like that. And basically that's a full rebuild. This machine's ready to go to a car wash, a laundromat, an arcade, uh, wherever it goes, you can put tokens in here. Uh, there's instructions on here on what sizes of coins it can uh, use. So you can fill this with tokens, you can do quarters, um, any of those things. And so it's a, it's a really good solid machine. I honestly don't know how old it is. My guess would be 30 plus years old, but it's still running very solid just with a few items repaired and a new validator and it's gonna keep uh, churning away. So whoever I've sold it to on eBay, I, it's some, going somewhere in Colorado. Uh, they're gonna get a lot of use out of it as well. And uh, we're just gonna keep going with it. So until next time guys, we'll see you on the next video.